This is part 20 of Link to SQL tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to use row version or timestamp columns to detect concurrency conflicts in Link to SQL. This is continuation to part 19, so please watch part 19 before proceeding. We'll be using this accounts table in this demo. We know that by default, Link to SQL is going to use all the columns of the table in the WHERE clause to detect concurrency conflicts. Here is an example of the dynamically generated update statement. Notice the WHERE clause here. We've got all the columns of this accounts table. This is okay if you've got few columns like this in the table, but in real-time applications, we may have tables with large number of columns. For example, what if the table has got 30 columns? The WHERE class is going to be huge and it can impact the performance of the application negatively. So in situations like this, we can use either row version or timestamp columns to detect concurrency conflicts. Let's look at the steps involved. So the first step here is to add a version column to this accounts table. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So at the moment, this accounts table has got these three columns. Now let's alter the table. and add a column. Let's call this version and the data type of this column has to be either row version or timestamp. Let's use row version. So now this version column is added to the accounts table and notice the value for this column is automatically computed. Now anytime we modify this row in any manner, you know, this version column value is going to be automatically changed. Okay, so we can just use this column to detect if that row has been modified since the data was loaded into the application. Let's actually look at that in action. So let's flip to Visual Studio now. At the moment, if we look at the sample.dbml file, we don't have that uh, version column here. So let's actually delete this entity and then let's go to Server Explorer. Let's drag and drop the accounts table once again onto the designer surface so we have the version property generated now let's save these changes and let's go to the sample.designer.cs file and then look at the code that is generated for this version property so if you look at this version property uh, notice we've got you know, this property is version is set to true and look at this is DB generated. That's also set to true, meaning the value for this column is dynamically generated by the database. Now, let's save all these changes. Let's go ahead and run the application. Let's see if the application is going to use that version column now to detect concurrency conflicts. Let's go to the code behind file and then throw a breakpoint just before we call submit changes method. And let's click this deposit $500 button. So the execution should stop on that line. Now let's go ahead and change the value of this column. Now inspect the value of this version column. It is, I mean, it's ending with 7D1. So let's go ahead and paste it right there. So that's the original value. Now let's update the account balance. We are going to deduct $300 from 3000. So let's execute this update statement. Now let's select the data back and now look at the value of this version column. It's changed from 7D1 to 7D2 and the account balance is also deducted. Now let's go back to our application. And before we continue, let's fire up SQL Profiler. So let's go to Tools, SQL Profiler. And let's connect to local SQL Server installation and run a new trace. So the trace is running now. Let's go to our application. Now let's press F10 and see if it comes to the catch block. Notice that the control comes to the catch block, meaning it has thrown that change conflict exception. So let's press F5 now. Look at that. You know, we have the current value, original value, and database value there. And these are the current, original, and database values of that version column. And 
Now let's go back to SQL Profiler and look at the update query. So this is the update query that is dynamically generated. So let's copy that and paste it within SQL Server Management Studio. Now look at the update query. So update accounts set account balance equals to P2 where account number equals at P0 and look at that. Now it is using version column to detect concurrency conflicts. And if you look at at P1 attribute, so at P1, notice that its data type is timestamp. And if we look at its value, it's the initial version column value, which is ending with 7D1. So here we are using the version column to detect concurrency conflicts and link to SQL. Thank you for listening and have a great day.